Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Um, yeah, okay, so this, this talk is um, exactly um, about what you said. It's basically an introduction um, to Docker and um, how we can, um, um, as Grails developers, get benefit from this, um, from this thing. And what we'll do is um, going through a little bit of theory here and then starting some examples with um, just hitting the Docker command line and um, see how this works in, um, in the Grails ecosystem. Um, can you just give me a short hands who has ever touched the, the Docker command line? Oh, okay, okay. <coughs> okay, so for, for the ones um, that did not um, have the possibility to do so, um, I'll just um, give you here one quick example um, just to show you um, um, uh, wha what, what is possible or, or how, how it uh, feels to, to work with Docker. Um, basically, what we, what we will do here now is um, that we um, create a, a, um, a running um, um, Linux installation and this, is, uh, this installation is fully isolated in terms that um, actually, okay, so this is a Mac, and when I hit the um, the Docker command line like um, like this, if you say, say Docker, Docker run minus it minus minus rn, I'll um, we will figure that out what what this means, and we will um, do this one. So um, what happens in the next half and a second right now is that we basically created a, a virtual machine. So you can think of it like a, a VMware virtual machine, but as you can see, it's just um, kind of lightning fast. And um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, actually not because <laughs> my my OS X is too old for that. <laughs> so I use the Docker machine one. So um, yeah, we can we can have a talk a little bit later what what how this um, relates to to this stuff. Okay, so just to show you here, okay, so we have a um, Ubuntu uh, running right now, and when I make something like this, then this is a normal file system from Ubuntu, and if I um, um, exit the container, then it will immediately shut down and remove from, um, uh, from my computer here. So there's no, nothing left, okay? So this is just, just as a um, quick, uh, quick intro here. <coughs> okay, so yeah. Uh, my, my name is Mario. Um, I'm a software developer um, in, in Germany, and yeah, I have a blog um, and I have a Twitter handle if you want to follow me. Um, okay, so um, to, to get started with um, with Docker, um, basically what um, um, what we have to think um, about is the idea of of, of a container. And um, um, the, the company Docker Inc., which is um, basically funds most of the, um, of the Docker project, um, always tries to stress out um, the analogy between um, physical containers and how um, these, uh, these things, um, yeah, so just to get an analogy between what is a Docker container and what is, what is a, um, a real container. <coughs> and when, when we look at this thing, um, then we see, uh, we see different things here. First of all, it is, uh, uh, it is isolated. Okay, so the stuff that is inside of this container um, uh, will not interchange with um, uh, other stuff that um, probably gets shipped on the same boat. So when you have a look at this, um, this example here uh, where this is pre-container pre um, um, stuff, and in this situation, the person, okay, so first of all, um, the, the whole goods get um, transported to, to, uh, to the boat, and this was a fairly complex uh, mechanism to do, and as well, the person who is responsible for doing that has to know the insides of the goods. Okay, so um, he has to know if, um, yeah, the, he wants to transport X, for example, then he sh probably should do it in, um, one side, and uh, um, if there's any other thing that might damage these things, then he probably should not put it on, on top of that, right? <coughs> and um, when the container uh, thing started um, uh, started off, um, 
all of a sudden this, uh, this knowledge, um, this required knowledge um, fairly uh, disappeared because yeah, basically uh, the person who is responsible for, for carrying this, um, this containers around is not longer responsible for knowing what is inside the container because it doesn't really matter. <coughs> and yeah, then, then the second uh, thing here is that it is standardized which means that uh, these, uh, these containers have all the same sizes, all the same lengths, so they are pretty easel, easily um, um, to, uh, to put on top of each other, which means that the density on the, on the ship is, um, will, be, will be large, uh, will be la um, yeah, just um, which the utilization will be better. <coughs> okay, and so when, when we come back to this, um, this technology, uh, which, is, which is called container, then we can think of it like um, this is an application, but not that just the application, but all of its dependencies. So um, one example of this is when, when you create a, um, a Grails war file, let's, let's say Grails 2 application, and, and you create a war file. And um, um, what, what you have to do is, let's say you have um, a specific config um, that you, that you want to put on, on this Tomcat, and so what you do is that you, um, that you ship your, um, your raw file and then next to it you ship a documentation how to configure the Tomcat in order to be um, configured so that it will work out. And then you have stuff like um, additional libraries that are probably or that are likely um, not, not part of the raw file, for example, JVC driver or whatever you use there. <coughs> yeah. You know, uh, and, and, and so, so the container basically um, just, it is all put in, in, into the container and so um, this just simplifies uh, a lot of things. Okay, so you, you may be uh, familiar with, um, with the idea of, of something like VMware or, or um, Hyper-V or whatever uh, the, the, the tool at hand is. Basically, this is some kind of hypervisor-based virtualization technology. And um, I just, okay, so here's a, a quick comparison between um, these two approaches. And <coughs> um, when we have a look at the, differ the differences here, then we see um, that in the, the hypervisor-based world, you have um, a, fairly, uh, a fairly small operating system, which is the hypervisor, which normally sits directly on top of the um, on top of the hardware like for example when you have a um, VMware ESX server or something and what this thing does is that it um, creates or that it runs virtual machines and these virtual machines have um, <coughs> or the operating system inside the th these virtual machines have the impression that they run um, on real hardware and uh, how they do it is that they basically um, they, they, they put uh, some kind of an emulation layer uh, between, between the operating system inside the virtual machine and um, between the actual hardware. And so in this case, this, um, these operating systems here, uh, they, are, they are thinking that they're using some kind of um, Intel CPU or um, you know, some kind of hard, standardized hard, hard, hard disk and um, whatever underneath is um, not um, not really present to them, and with this approach, um, as you may may see it here, um, since we um, we duplicate the operating system for every um, virtual machine, <coughs> what what's end up happening is that, and this is what what the, the what the people at VMware and and, and all, all what is yeah some kind of best practice is that you normally don't put like 2,000 um, virtual machines on one, on one host. Because um, what, what would happen then is that the, the overhead that the um, um, operating systems generate would just be um, too, too much. And so, yeah, there's some kind of number like 50 or something that is um, most likely to, to work out. And after that, there, there comes a situation where it doesn't really work out anymore. <coughs> Okay, so when we look at this um, container-based virtualization, which Docker is just an example of, um, then we see um, some, some kind of difference here. Um, so so then, um, the, the, in this case, um, it is actually, um, 
Okay, so the, the operating system is just um, running like on, on direct hardware here in this case. And um, instead of having a hypervisor that emulates some kind of hardware, that, um, here what happens here is that just the user space of the processes um, are isolated, which means that when you um, do normal computation or something like this, where you don't hit the operating system in order to um, in order to get um, like you know write a file to disk or get some Ethernet traffic or something like this, when you don't do this, then um, you are just in this user space here, and um, you don't actually. Um, um, yeah, th basically this is the thing that is isolated, okay? And so if you have any kernel calls, which means something like write a file or um, do an Ethernet um, connection or, or anything like that, <coughs> then what ends up happening is that it um, will take care by the operating system, which is just um, as one instance here. So um, from an isolation point of view, this is a little bit more like um, um, like some kind of segmentation of the operating system, we can we can think of this, and um, so the operating system or the kernel of, of the operating system is actually shared between these uh, between these containers, which has some kind of implications. Like for example, that you, um, for example, in Docker, um, uh, right now I would say you have to run Linux to to, to get this working. Um, because because Linux is um, capable of, um, of of this kind of um, virtualization technology, <coughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, and basically the point that we see here is that um, the the uh, the application gets a little bit more space, which means that you have a higher density on the uh, um, on the hardware that you're using. So it is an actually uh, compared to a hypervisor-based approach, it is fairly. Um, yeah, actually not a problem to run, you know, kind of a hundred um, containers or something like this. And as we saw in the, in the first intro here, this is just um, hitting a command and um, exit it with a, with a knuckle one. <coughs> yeah, and so when we have a look at what, what Docker is, then basically it's just an example of, um, um, of a container virtualization technology. And actually, there have been others that, um, so from, from a technical point, Docker does not make, um, does not bring much more value to the table. And we'll have uh, a talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so we see some, some stuff here like um, in Solaris, there's some, some things like Solaris loans, and then we have FreeBSD jails, and um, in, in Linux since, I think, 2004, 2005, there was something called LXC, which um, Docker was initially um, built on top. And yeah, actually I had yeah, a few years back in, in a university, I had a course um, about the IBM mainframe and th they had a, a kind of a similar approach which was called LPA, which is just logical pet petitioning or something. And yeah, so from this point of view, it's just um, a, a pretty old idea, which is just segmentation. In fact, Container-based virtualization is far um, older than um, than hypervisor-based virtualization. <coughs> okay, um, yeah. And so when we look at this um, this marketing and technology comparison here, just to give you a quick um, intro on on how this um, is uh, implemented, then from a marketing speak, we would something say like, okay, so this is just a hypervi uh, a lightweight hypervisor VM. And as we saw that in the in the first bash command here, this seems to be the case. <coughs> and um, not not just in case of um, how fast it can uh, it can start up, but also in um, how much um, overhead and in running it in it, it actually creates. Um, okay, so then from from this isolation point of view, uh, the te the technology that uh, enables this is um, uh, a feature that. Um, was a few years back introduced into the Linux kernel, which is namespaces, which basically, um, yeah, as I said, just um, segments your operating system in a way, in a pretty clever way. Um, on what end up happening is something that um, a container sees, for example, um, the file system, but the file system is just um, in, yeah, let's like say, in, in the, when we look at the 
uh, the Java um, namespace mechanism or the package mechanism, this is basically the idea. And, and um, the file system is just within uh, one sub package, we can, we can call it. And from, so it is isolated, but um, this is just you know, some kind of clever, clever way to, um, to deal with that. Yeah, then we have something like quality of service when you say, okay, so I, I have two containers running and one should be um, a little bit, uh, get a little bit more attention from CPU and RAM and whatever, uh, whatever have you. Um, and this is done via, via C groups. <coughs> yeah, okay, so, and then um, what we could do is to look to look at Docker from a total different angle. And <coughs> as I said, technology-wise, it's not something that um, has never been done before, or um, um, basically it sits yeah, on, on, on the shoulders of giants. And um, what, what the Docker project basically um, does is some, um, some very good, good stuff um, regarding to the accessibility point of view. So for example, when we take the, the documentation, then this is um, much more comprehensive than a lot of other open source tools, I would say. But not only from this one, when, when we just talked about this thing here, how, how is this running on, on a Mac, <coughs> um, what they end up doing is create a whole lot of different um, um, tools around, around this, uh, this Docker engine that just open up the um, uh, this technology for more people. Yeah, d you don't have to be a, a Linux kernel profe uh, professional to to be able to to, to get up and uh, get up and running in a few in a few minutes. <coughs> okay, and then then obviously okay. So then the next thing is um, the community, um, and especially w there's uh, something called uh, Docker Hub, which is. Um, kind of similar to what GitHub is to application code. You can think of it like this for, just for infrastructure code. Like when, so the major um, open source um, project, for example, let's say WordPress or um, Postgres or uh, Redis, um, they all have pre-packed Docker images on, on this um, repository. And what you can do is, as, as I did it with the Ubuntu package, um, what you can do is just um, to, get, to grab these, these images and get up and running even faster. And what you can additionally do is that you can share your own infrastructure code. Like for example, when you have, um, let's say we take in, there, there's a Tomcat image, and what you can do is um, you, can, you can create your, your own Tomcat image on, on, top of the, on, on top of the normal Tomcat image and secure it in some fancy way. So, you know, so just um, put be best practices uh, in, into it and you can just republish it on Docker Hub. And so everybody can, can um, uh, get this then in a, a fairly, fairly easy manner. <coughs> yeah, okay, so and um, talking about the, the, the um, existing success of Docker is probably because um, um, yeah, it's at the right time, at the right place, I would say, because the, this whole cloud thing came up and um, with that there was the need for automation, which um, is all in this, in this DevOps area. And technology, and yeah, Docker as a technology is just a, um, um, a result of that in some kind. <coughs> okay, so yeah, when we, when we look at um, what, uh, from from a developer's point of view, what what benefits we uh, we get in this in this thing? Th These are just four things that I that I came up with here. Um, first of all, <coughs> it uh, yeah basically it, it allows you to um, to to strive for a situation where you have a, a dev environment of your applications that is um, pretty similar to to the one that is running in production. It can be the same. This is, depends a little bit on the impl implementation, but generally it opens up the door for this. And then the next thing is that it is actually quite a good um, distribution mechanism, as I um, in, the, in the first slide said, because of the standardization and because all your dependencies are in, in this container. <coughs> yeah, and from an, from an open, uh, operational point of view, 
the only thing that you have to install is uh, the Docker binary on the on the server that you are running, and you have to be on on Linux for now. Um, there's yeah, there's not even um, a real need to have a specific Linux kernel or something. There's just uh, an, an a lower limit of the versions. Be below that, you can't do that because Linux um, in these versions didn't have the features that are required. <coughs> okay, and so yeah, the last thing is that you actually can um, be able to share your environment. Uh, so so if you have a, um, a colleague that that um, has um, to do the onboarding process, then um, yeah, you can just put your environment into these uh, into these Docker containers and let um, him just download it and get up and running um, fairly fairly easily. <coughs> yeah, okay, so what we'll do now is uh, um, just um, a few, um, a few live demos and we can have a look at <coughs> um, at the different stuff and I will just um, go through different um, options here and with the Docker command line, so you can, um, you can pick that up. Okay, so. <coughs> okay, so this is the first example that we, that we want to do here. Um, oh, no, 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 I, I will skip that because we already did that. Um, Okay, so um, the general idea is that when you, uh, what I did in the first place when I um, instantiated the, the container with um, Docker run, right, and um, when, I, when I exited, okay, so let's, uh, let's um, take this example. Um, Okay, so what we what we can do here is okay. So we are inside the container, right? And and I just uh, created a file called my file, which is um, placed under the root directory, and just um, print that out here. And when I exit the container, <coughs> and the next thing that I do is um, uh, to get uh, to get into the container uh, again then and we'll have a look at um, the root file system then this my file thing is gone right and so th this is because um, uh, what I what I did when I when I called exit is and then reinstantiated the container it was not the same container it was another container with um, with um, a total different file system. <coughs> and so this is some kind of way where um, Docker um, tries to, to put, put uh, best practices into this thing here. Because what, what we are used to do when, um, when, we, insta when we installed um, a, normal, um, a, long, a normal Linux server here, um, the traditional way is that we you know, SSH into the server, then apt-get install Tomcat or something like this, and do, doing all this configuration stuff, the initial part. And <coughs> um, when we do this, this is not re reproducible. Okay, so this is, we, we, we type that into the command line, and um, when this, uh, the server burns down, then the thing is gone. Okay, and what, um, the idea of Docker, and not only of Docker, but all, uh, um, more the general DevOps approach here is um, to treat uh, infrastructure work as, um, as code, which means that everything that you do um, on the infrastructure level <coughs> um, yeah, should be treated as code, and should the, 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 normal, um, the normal stuff that you would do when you um, uh, w when you work with, w or when you develop software, then um, th 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 the same things apply here. So, um, uh, concrete, this means instead of um, going into the container and uh, SSH into the container and uh, configuring a whole lot of stuff, what you will do is to create a file 
that will describe the end state of the server. And whenever you, um, when you, ever, whenever you want to change um, the state of the server, you will change the configuration file and recreate um, the, the container from this, um, from this definition. And then you can yeah, just use this, this configuration file and um, put it to, on, on a Git repository or whatever. <coughs> Nevertheless, there um, are situations um, when this makes sense. So, for example, we want to run a Postgres installation in the, in the Docker image, then it's probably not a good idea to just kill the, kill the uh, container and the data is gone, right? <coughs> okay, so and with this, we are at our second example. Um, there's, um, there's this thing called um, dash v, dash, dash v, which um, basically lets you um, put existing um, directories or files from the host and put them into the container. So basically the, it's the, the same idea if you're familiar with um, this volume mounting in, in Linux, then this is essentially the same. Um, in this case, I'm on my Mac now, and we have a thing, my persistent file, <coughs> okay? And what we can um, create is docker run, and say minus, minus uh, v, and then we will just use and the colon um, means that this is the, the first part is the one where you define the um, the files or the directories within the within the host, and then in after the colon, it will mount it to any point within the container. In this case, we will just um, we will just um, stick it to to the root directory. Oh, okay. So we should define. Uh, um, an image that we want to run, in this case Ubuntu, and we will say bash. And when we have a look at it right now, then um, we see that <coughs> um, we can access this, this file. And when we, when we exit the container and um, restart the container, then we can do um, see, see this stuff. Okay, so this is the use case where where you would normally see um, some kind of data data storage um, <coughs> or, or something like this. Okay, so um, when we do um, any kind of um, network traffic or network interaction, um, then um, the situation normally is that um, when you run a container and you have a service like Tomcat running, then none of the ports within this container are exported outside of um, the, the host that is running the container. So normally, so if I, if I say um, docker run Tomcat and he would normally listen to 8080, then this is not accessible from, out, from the outside world. <coughs> and what, what you have to do when you want to do that is um, that you say um, it's um, dash p, and dash p means this is just, um, so if you're familiar with your home, home wireless router and they have network address translation, this is basically the same thing. Okay, so you can, the, so the router is here the, um, the, the, the host of the, um, of the containers, and you define the outer port in the first one, and then the inner port is the um, the port that it should get mapped and uh, uh, within the container. So, in this case, we have something like eight thousand eighty-eight, and we want to um, within the container there is a web server running on the port eight thousand, um, and.
<coughs> okay, so do we have um, two, two different um, um, config parameters here. Before I used minus um, I and minus T and um, dash dash R, RM. And this is just um, useful when you want to have an interactive terminal that you can access. But when you want to run um, a web server, you probably don't want want to um, open all the time this um, uh, this output here. So you can just say um, dash D and which um, will um, start uh, the container as a daemon. And so we'll just get back to our normal, um, normal uh, bash here. Yeah, thanks. <coughs> okay, so in the next thing is that um, to access um, the container later because we um, we set minus D then it is a good idea to to define a name for that otherwise just docker will create a, a default name or a, 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 I think it's a random it's a random num with, with strange names actually <coughs> okay and when we do that this is oh, okay so one one thing that is um, uh, notable here um, the last thing J JP Tetzel slash web this is um, an image that um, lives on docker hub and it's just from a random guy that has um, pushed a, a web server to this, okay? <coughs> okay, so what we get back here is just a random hash that represents the, the, um, the, the Docker container. And we can um, take a look at, at the running container with Docker PS. <coughs> and in this case, we see, okay, there is a, um, a JPSO web um, up and running and does this Python 3 thing here. And then we see our port mapping. And what we can do now is uh, go to docker host slash 8088. And we should see hello world. OK. <coughs> um, yeah, so if you, if you run this, this example on Linux, then you don't need to um, say docker host. But instead, you would say localhost. This is just. Uh, the situation here that I'm I'm on a Mac and actually this is yeah so this is just another layer of indirection as the um, currently the uh, the Docker stuff can't run on on a non Linux instance what they do is um, when you install Docker on um, or it's called Docker machine when you call uh, when you install this on on a Mac what it does it is um, under the hood create creates a a tiny virtual machine, a hypervisor-based virtual machine, just with a, you know, just there's not much more than the Linux kernel inside of this. And the command line that we, um, that we created here, or the, the, the commands are pushed against this remote, um, um, remote interface here. Okay. <coughs> um, okay, with this we can do stuff like um, docker kill, simple web server and um, remove that. Okay. So as I said, the, the main point of, of this Docker thing is um, to, or, or one main point is to embrace infrastructure as code. And this, um, we haven't touched that yet until now. And so this is the first. Th this is the first time that we um, that we want to use this um, this Docker file. Okay. So, and we will just <coughs> um, use the same example um, from from the last time here. Um, and what what uh, happens here is that you uh, define a file which represents the state of the server or what ha what should happen. And what you do is that you actually okay. So we can um, we can we can um, print that out as well. Um, what you additionally do is that you have a build phase. Okay, so this is the time when you have, for example, you use your uh, Grails war, and you want to put this inside of the container. This is the this is the time when this happens, and this um, Docker file definition will be used in order to put all your files into the container and do all, all sorts of other stuff. <coughs> okay, in this case, um, 
I have four files here, um, or two, two files that are um, used to, to put inside the container. Um, there's an index HTML and there's a layout, layout file. And um, yeah, when we have another look at the Docker file, the first um, directive that has to be set is the from directive, which is basically, um, so, so normally you would, you would start with a base image, right? And so this, this might be something like Ubuntu or, or Tomcat or uh, um, in this case, this is a running uh, web server. And um, so what, uh, this is the from directive basically. Okay, and so then what we, what we do here with this add command is that we copy the index HTML file from our, um, from our host and put it into this htdoc slash index HTML um, uh, in, in this directory. And um, yeah, this, this is basically what it does here. Okay, so what I, what I actually wanted to show you here is just that I can interchange this hello world um, HTML file and replace it with, with um, some other stuff. And um, this, the, the technology that allows, um, that allows us to do that is um, that Docker uses uh, a thing called layered file system, which means so if you have, you can, you can imagine it like a number of, um, um, of, of glasses so, and every every glass that you that you put on top of each other, um, it, when um, so, for example, there is an HT docs um, directory in the in this space container here, and there is an index HTML um, in in this first layer. Okay, so there is called there, there's the content is hello world, and what we do now is we create another layer and put these um, index HTML file on top of that, and since it run, um, it um, it's on the same um, directory, when you look from the top of it, it looks like you only see the, the, last, um, the, the last file. And this is what happens here. <coughs> okay, so, and then what we'll do here is um, do the Docker build. Um, then we have dash T, which means that we can give this thing a name that we will reference this later when we say docker run, and then we wanna say, okay, which image, in this, and the first ones we had, we had Ubuntu, and this is just my own. Um, and then the dot here is just to say, okay, the, the docker file that you have to look up is in this current directory. <coughs> okay, so then he basically has this, this build phase, and what we can do now is just say docker run. Then we will do the port mapping. And instead of s using the original one, we say simple custom web server. Yeah. Okay, so this, this is actually just, um, I, I stumbled upon this a few times. So what, uh, this is the output of the, uh, of the container, and he says, okay, um, I'm, I'm listening to port 8000, which is um, the internal port and not the external port. So don't look always on, this, on these things. Be aware that you actually um, changed the port to 8088. In this case, you can also, um, do the same port, but this just won't will work for for one container. <coughs> okay, so then, yeah, if we, yeah, this is basically my my fancy styled um, HTML file here. <coughs> okay. So and then we have our last example, um, which is a um, which is a fairly complex app, I would say, which is actually Grails app. So, um, um, the, the Grails app is called 301, which is, um, yeah, just an open source project, which is uh, kind of an ULL shortener, like bit.ly. <coughs> and, um, okay, so what we do now here is we have a look at the Docker file, just to show you, um, 
just to show you here the differences. Um, so in this case, instead of, um, okay, so in this case, the base image is, is the Tomcat, and this is the office official Tomcat image that is, uh, lives on Docker Hub, <coughs> and is actually maintained from the guys that um, um, use, uh, or that, that produce Tomcat. Um, and yeah, we have a uh, Java, Java 8 version of it. And when we have a look at, um, <coughs> okay, so we have um, two other files here that are important for now, which is, the first one is uh, the Docker, uh, the Tomcat users XML, which we'll just put from outside the container, inside the container, so we, um, yeah, this is the same thing as with the index HTML, we just copy the file and define our own, um, I'm sorry, our own um, file here. And yeah, then just uh, let's have a look at the Docker file once again. <coughs> yeah, this is the second line here, uh, which is add Tomcat users to user local Tomcat conf. And the next line is that um, you can, what you can do is, um, when, when this build happens is that you can um, run scripts. Um, well this is just with this run directive here. And what I do there is um, um, just to, 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 to um, kick out every, um, every war file that is inside of this container. Um, just, okay, so the, 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 default, the default Tomcat comes just with um, different, um, different um, example wars, and this is what I do there. <coughs> yeah, then I'll add another, a few another files and um, gzip then and whatever. And then there, there's, pa there's a thing called um, pack the app files into the container, and this is where, where the meet actually happens because what you do is in the, in the pre phase, you will just do the Grails um, war kind of thing, and then you just copy your, um, copy your wall file, so your actual, app, so your actual application into this, con um, in the, into this uh, web directory from the Tomcat. <coughs> and by the way, this is, this is um, a Grails 2 app, and this is just for, for the demo because actually it turns out in Grails 3, it's just so easy to get that done, so it won't be a, a complex app in that manner. <coughs> okay, um, what you can additionally do here is the last slide, uh, the last thing here is that you can set um, operating system um, environments variables. In this case, I defined the Catalina uh, ops um, config variable and said um, I wanna pass additional, yeah, I have an additional um, external config Ruby that I'm using there, and I will just um, pass that to the, to the war file so it is able to pick this one up. <coughs> um, okay, so, yeah, with this we can say um, docker run dash it dash dash um, then we have to um, do the, the port mapping and say, um, I will just skip the the build phase here because you know it's just not 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 relevant as you um, as we have seen this before. And <coughs> what happens now is yeah the the Tomcat basically starts up. And as we have created the war file um, beforehand and just copy it into the container, it will just pick this uh, this one up or actually is part of the container, right? So in, in in the in the in the situation where I just um, use Docker run, then it's already in the binary. And yeah, so it will just, <coughs> which will, will just come up. Um, is this? So I have a hard time find my my mouse here. Okay, so. Fairly slow. Yeah. Okay. So basically, this is this is the point here, right? And um, we actually have another slide for um, 
So if you want to try it yourself, how easy it is, you can just execute this one, docker run um, dash dash p, uh, so on, and just, um, it is app on, on Docker Hub, so you can just download it. And <coughs> um, as I said, in Grails 3, um, since Spring Boot pretty much support this um, in, a, in a much more easy way, um, and this has to do with the situation that you can just say, okay, Java uh, minus jar, and then execute the war file. And I've, I've created this, this, um, this Docker file there. Um, basically what it does is I, I, don't use it, I don't use a Tomcat as a base image because I don't need to, because it is um, just part of the, of the war. And um, so I'll just use the, the Java one and then just copy the war file um, to whatever, whatever, um, um, to whatever file uh, directory stuff here. And then, <coughs> so the last one is kind of interesting. So if you, um, in the first place I, I said, okay, docker run Ubuntu bash. And bash is the command that uh, I explicitly um, talked about, or I explicitly want to be executed. And so you don't need to um, say, you don't need to actually um, define um, a command that you want to execute. And in this case, this will just use the, the one that is defined in the Docker file. In this case, I will just say Java minus Java and, and start up the app. Okay. This is, okay. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, which this is, um, <coughs> okay, so this is a fairly easy example because w I'm just running an H2 database in, in inside of the container. Um, what What is not part of the presentation anymore, but if you are interested, you can ask me later, is how to um, instantiate different containers and combine them. Like, for example, when you have a container that runs a Bos Postgres installation and then you have a container that runs the application, um, then you should interconnect this in any kind of a way. <coughs> okay, so, yeah, was this, sorry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it has nothing to do with Docker. It is, it said it's something to do with either I developed my application here so, so, so badly that it was so, or, or the spring, uh, spring security configuration here, something, something is going on. This is just something to do with the Tomcat and the war file. <coughs> okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I would like to close this for now. So yeah, if you have any, any questions, then we can uh, go this way. No, okay, so this is great. So yeah, then thank you for your attention and have a nice evening.